Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Open Source Tonight. Folks, today I'm going to talk to you all about the Raspberry Pi 5. So let's get right on into it. All right, so you can see here we have my computer screen up, and we can see that the computer, everything optimized is pretty much the headline here. And that does seem to be pretty accurate based on the videos I've watched. They've optimized a lot of different things uh, in the system. Two to three times speed improvements of previous generations. Anyhow. So if we look at the specifications, that's what I'm interested in. This is kind of just my thoughts on it. So if you want to put this on in the background and do something else, it's basically radio with a picture. <laughs> so you don't really have to pay too much attention to what I'm showing on the screen if you don't want to. Because I'm pretty much going to tell you what's on it. They've got a brand new Broadcom... Uh, ARM processor running at 2.4 gigahertz. It's a quad core 64 bit processor. And it's a Cortex A76, if you want to know the Pacific ARM specification. And here's what's really, I think, one of the things that's more interesting to me. Yeah, it's a faster processor, but we kind of expected that in a Raspberry Pi. But what I find really interesting is this cryptography extensions. Now, what that means is that you can do decryption and encryption basically in hardware now, in the in the actual CPU. It's designed to accelerate that process. And encryption is something that, without acceleration, can be slow. And so this is going to allow for maybe faster TLS traffic for, say, Nginx on this box. Uh, if you wanted to run it as a web server, I can see different use cases. Uh, if you wanted to do, like, uh, SIP over TLS, that's for voice over IP. So, like, if you have a, uh, a phone system that runs over the computer network and, and you want to use the Raspberry Pi to be your... Uh, telephony server with, say, Asterisk, the telephony server, you can now, assuming they build in the support for these extensions up here, we should eventually get faster encryption and decryption support. That's the thing. It, from what I understand, it doesn't need to actually have the support added. I could be wrong on that. If you know something I don't, let me know in the comments. 512 gigs of... Uh, um, gigs, sorry, that would have been really great. <laughs> let me start that over. 512 kilobits... Uh, kilobytes of per core L2 caches and two megs of three L3 cache. Now, for those that don't know, caches like that basically means it can store what the processor is working on and it will be faster, but it has to be within that size of these two here. So L2 is the fastest and L3 is then slower. So, you know, yeah, there's less over here in the 512 per core of L2, but it's going to be faster. So if you got something that's small to fit in there, it's better to throw it in there. Another one that's really interesting to me as a video guy is the fact that they've got a brand new GPU in here. They have a video core uh, GPU supporting OpenGL, ES 3.1, and Vulcan, Vel, Vel, no, I can never seem to pronounce this, Vel, Vulcan, Vel, V-U-L-K-A-N. I'm sorry, folks. I'm horrible at the pronunciation thing. And it supports that version 1.2. These are graphics display APIs that video games, video production tools, etc. can use. So it'll be interesting to see how good the video performance is on this with things that are optimized for it. In addition to that, we now have the ability to output 4K at 60 frames per second to two HDMI outputs with HDR for the brightness and color and all of that, which is really cool. And HDR, for those that don't know, is high dynamic range. Most video, including the video you're watching right now, is SDR, standard dynamic range. Basically, HDR images can have more colors. They can have a brighter and darker image than SDR, and so you can, you know, think of it as basically better <laughs> in most simple of terms. It supports HEVC or H.265 hardware decoding with 4K 60 frames per second support, and I think that's going to be really interesting because now we can play back 4K using H.265 on a Raspberry Pi. That's pretty interesting. As a guy like me that likes to do video, I'm like, I want one just so I can have it as a video playback box. That would be pretty cool. I don't even have anything to support 4K, but the fact that I could have something that does and then output from the Pi that and it should be able to all work, that's pretty impressive. It's got RAM upgrades as well. So LDDDR4, 4 and 8 gig SKUs are available at launch. 
And I think the fact they're putting that out there gives me a hint that they might be giving out a two gig one at some point. And honestly, I don't know if everybody's going to need four and eight gigs. I think two gigs for a lot of use cases of a Raspberry Pi is plenty. Uh, I have used two gig Raspberry Pis to do a lot of things that really never hit two gigs. So if it's not going to do that anyway, then what's the point, right? It's got dual band AC Wi-Fi, which I believe it already had in the previous version. It's got Bluetooth, but the now the nice thing it's got on top of regular Bluetooth is Bluetooth BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy. And so that means that you're going to have to use less power, but the device will have to be close and it'll have to support BLE Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. But that's still pretty cool. The micro SD card slot has been uh sped up the fastest speed it can do and i i don't remember what this mode means offhand but it's i think i want to say you can do like 90 to 100 megs a second transfer now i could be wrong on that we got two usb 3.0 ports and they both have five gig per second operation now why is that important it's because that it can be done at the same time they are actually not on a hub. On a lot of computers, Raspberry Pis, and even desktops, you'll find multiple USB ports on a hub. And so if you have three ports on a hub and each port supports five gigs, but you are using all of them to transfer something, and they're all trying to hit that fastest speed possible, it's going to split that five gigs into pieces. The mathematicians in the comments can do the math and tell us how many you'd get in that. I don't even want to do it. I'm horrible at math anyway. Got two USB 2.0 ports, and you'll notice it doesn't talk about simultaneous transfer on that, but hey, still nice to have them. That could probably be used for like keyboards or mouse or something like that, because those are usually 2.0, and I don't really think you're going to even probably have a problem saturating it. Gigabit Ethernet with PoE Plus support. This is something I really wish they would just build in to the actual Pi itself. I get that they are trying to make it cheaper and maybe that's a trade-off that makes sense. And it, it probably does, but I just would like the idea of being able to power my Pies off of PoE. I have a PoE switch here and such, but I don't want to have to deal with getting another hat to do it. It just, it's something I've never done because I don't want to deal with that. But, you know, at least we got it. And, you know, if you do want to power it over PoE, it is an option. Unfortunately, it's an option that requires additional hardware, but you know, again, it's possible. This one's really interesting to me. It's PoE, uh, PoE, PCIe, PCIe, uh, PCIe 2.0, and it's a 1x interface for faster peripherals. And from what I've seen people talk about online, it seems like I can actually do faster than 1x, but maybe not reliably. Uh, but that's still pretty cool because 1x is pretty fast compared to nothing. And so I think that's pretty interesting that you can do that. And again, it requires a hat, but you could put like an M.2 hat on here and use an M.2 drive. I think that's pretty cool. Another big one for me, and this is huge, is that real-time clock right here. So for those that do not know, a real-time clock is something that will store the internal time of the computer. And if it can't access a time server for some reason, maybe you have a Raspberry Pi that is acting as something that's not going to touch the internet. Maybe it's offline and it's in some kind of a kiosk or something that doesn't touch Wi-Fi or Ethernet. It just seems to show, I don't know, slides or something, but you want the current date in the corner or something. Well, anyway, I've had situations where I want Raspberry Pis to not have to touch the internet or it would be a pain to get them to touch the internet and I can use a real-time clock in those situations because then if I reboot the Pi, my time stays accurate. And there's been little fixes to deal with that before that kind of work like storing the time inside of a file that gets wrote to the SD card before shutdown. But if it shuts down unexpectedly or something, you have a problem. So that's pretty cool. Another one talking about shutdown and power up is it has a power supply button you don't have you don't know how much that i'm excited about this i get so tired of having to unplug the cable and i'm concerned that one of these days i'm going to break the port trying to unplug it or something so now with the pi 4 not a problem anymore don't have to worry about breaking the the connector because now we can just leave it plugged in all the time like a normal computer and just press the on button you know I, i'm surprised it took them this long quite frankly to get it but hey i'm glad we have it So, yeah, that's pretty much that the info on that. October 2023. So now up here, October 7th, when I'm recording this. 
is when it will be available. I don't know about what you all think, but tell me in the comments because I'd love to know. Do you all think this is going to be interesting? I think for some use cases, a Pi 4 and other Pis will continue to be plenty enough power. I think maybe for video production purposes or a file server or something that really needs a lot of throughput, maybe it might make sense to have you know, these faster uh, simultaneous USB connections and the power button would be nice. But I could see some of us using the older Pis for certain things. Anyway, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video on open source tonight. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye. And action.